During an emergency, seconds matter. Use the free Smart 911 app to provide vital information to first responders. Dispatchers will see your address, medical information, and details about your home and pets. Your information is displayed to dispatchers only when a registered phone number calls 911. You control what information you share. Protect your loved ones. Plan ahead. It can make all the difference to keep your family safe. September is National Preparedness Month. Don't wait, be ready today. Good afternoon, everyone, and thanks for joining us for this special web chat here. We're talking about disasters and how to prepare yourself. Of course, September is Disaster Preparedness Month, and this is a really important topic for all of us here in Kern County and around the nation, of course, uh, to, to really be prepared and know what to do ahead of time before that disaster strikes. And joining me this afternoon is Tammy Kimbrell. She is a senior dispatcher and 911 coordinator with KCSO and also Brandon Smith, who is a battalion chief with Kern County Fire Department, here to talk more about, again, how to prepare yourself ahead of those emergencies. Thanks so much for joining us. I uh, really appreciate it. Uh, let's talk about uh, one of the things that you can do ahead of a an emergency, and that is signing up for Smart 911. This is something that I've signed up for uh, earlier this year, and it's really easy to do. Tammy, tell us a little bit about what Smart 911 is. So Smart 911 is a number registry that you can sign up for with your mobile device, your landline, your VoIP number, and through cable. Um, you can sign up using your computer, or you can locate the Smart 911 app in for either Androids or your Apple phone at the App Store, or you can sign up with a text message by typing SMART911 and then sending it to 67283. As a dispatcher, um, you were talking earlier about how important this is for uh, first responders to better respond to these emergencies. Talk about how essential it is for people to, to sign up for this. So it's really essential and just so you know, when you sign up, you can give us as little information or as much as you want us to know. It's not for investigative purposes. It's purely just to help you because whenever you're in a true emergency, it's easily to forget what vital information you want to give dispatch. So if you sign up and you pre-tell us everything that you need to know, we need to know, whether it's a medical condition, if you have a child with autism, if you have a parent with Alzheimer's or becomes easily disoriented, you can give us all of that information ahead of time. You can put pictures in there of your loved ones, each person in your family, your husband, your children, even your pets. So if you had a child that got lost, for example, the Kern County Fair's here, so you can take a picture of your child prior to going to the fair so you know exactly what they're wearing. And then if they get lost at the fair, you can see what they're wearing. Talking about making this relevant, I mean, we just had the first day of the Kern County Fair yesterday and there's still a lot of fair time to go. Right. This is this is the time right now mm -hmm. to even download it and just, just to start and before you go to the fair. Right. All right, and Brandon, you were a battalion chief and you were responding to disasters all the time. Uh, talk about what it would, it would spend like for you and your department as this smart 911 technology has been implemented and people are starting to sign up for, how important is it for you to have this information for people to sign up to have the information out for you to respond to these emergencies? Uh, it's it's excellent because most of the time when we go to incidents, there's a lot of unknowns. And what Smart 911 brings to us is more known factors. So as an example, uh, maybe somebody with diabetes who um, their blood sugar is starting to get low, they feel it as a problem. And it, if they've entered into Smart 911, that information, as we're responding to this call, we'll have that information that they're a diabetic. So we at least have some direction of where we're going to possibly be treating this patient, whether it's going to be diabetes and if they were to go unconscious, now we know what some of their medical history is and we can start to treat that. And you're talking about medical emergencies, but I know that for, again, personal experiences I've gone through, it's so much more than signing up and letting people or letting first responders know about your medical history. It gives all the necessary information yes. that you would need because we don't know what disasters could come our way. It's not like we can uh, plan ahead and, and say, well, this disaster is going to happen at this time on this date. It's right. good for us to plan ahead by signing up for this. How have you seen it kind of work in action in responding to an emergency when really seconds and minutes matter? Yeah, um, I know all the agencies that are currently with it here in Kern County have had 
different reasonings why it's really important to them. But one that on the Kern County fire side and with the sheriff, we received a 911 call for a uh, group of individuals who had rolled their vehicle 500 feet down. And uh, with the traditional tracking, we were only able, able to put it to a tower uh, some distance away, which didn't Cell really, tower. yes. Yeah. And, and so we weren't able to really pinpoint exactly where they were at and the information they had was really nothing. Um, plus uh, language barrier was another factor. And so uh, the dispatcher basically went through, tracked it, um, we're able to go into the uh, rapid SOS, which is part of the smart 911 system. And we were able to use their number and track it almost exactly where they were. We were able to get the helicopter over, give them the Latin long or the coordinates for it. And they were able to actually find the people. And so that's just one example. And it's, there's been numerous within the county already. You know, when you think of, you know, when I've called 911 before, I know that there's always the dispatcher on the other end that is trained to deal with every sort of emergency and disaster that we can possibly think of. Uh, but again, when seconds matter, when the, you know, it's a very chaotic situation sometimes, how does this help having this extra bit of information just out there and available for those dispatchers before they send crews and first responders out to, to the situation? So this is great because whatever you tell us, it can pops up in front of us if you have the profile. If there's any type of alert, so say you're a hearing impaired person, it comes up and alerts me that you're hearing impaired. So I know that I need to use the texting feature to start talking to you because I need to find out what's wrong and going on so I can either get you to medical aid or stop law enforcement. Before, we never had that technology. So this is great now. Um, there's been cases where we had a domestic violence situation where the mother called and said her daughter had texted her, but she couldn't get out to us. So we were able to text her back and use the texting feature to talk to her, find out that the suspect was armed in the house, that, that she had children in the house, that they were in a room. The deputies were able to arrive there and get her to safety and take the custody, or sorry, the suspect into custody. It's really important to have all this information. So another case say that your, um, you have schizophrenia or PTSD and you want the deputies to be aware of that because there's certain triggers that you have. You want the deputies to know that you don't like loud noises or loud voices or they scare you. Um, if you tell the deputies ahead of time, then the deputies may re respond and react differently to ensure your safety. Is this, this is not just for people though that may have a medical condition. I mean, this is, talk a little bit about for, for the people who are watching right now who may not have a medical condition and might think, well, you know, I'm, I'm fine. I'm, mm -hmm. I don't need to sign up for this. It's still important, though, for right. people who may not have a medical condition to sign up for it mm -hmm. because there's other fields that can be filled out. Correct. So if you have a family and you have children, for example, you can list your children's schools on there. You can list your place of work. Let's um, talk about schools really quick okay. because I thought this was interesting, uh, that finding out a little bit about this beforehand, uh, about how important it is for for just your children mm -hmm. to have this information because uh, you know for first responders right. who may need that information to go to a child's school mm -hmm. they have that right there right so if your child dials 911 maybe they're lost they're not sure where they're at or you received information that your child may be in danger and you want us to go find them we know what school they're at when you call 911 or say that you're too upset to talk. Mm -hmm. We can see that you have a child that goes to this school, we'll ask is it this child? And if you've put your child's picture there, we can have that up there. And the deputies and medical aid, sorry, not medical aid, but fire, they have what's called the first responder portal. So they can see everything the dispatchers see on that profile. So they can see your child's picture. So they can go and actually be looking for your child rather than just a description of your child. So this is really beneficial for anyone. Now I've got to ask you, and someone's asking this on our KGT Facebook page about the privacy of this, mm -hmm. because you know there's a lot of questions right. on these fields, and sometimes we don't want this information to to be out there, Correct. especially with um, you know sensitive information. Mm -hmm. Is this secure for people to, in a way, be able to put all of their information out there? Um, on the web for, for first responders to use. It is secure. RAVE has all its security. Um, RAVE is the 
person who brings out Smart 91. Mm -hmm. They have all their computer security in place, and we can only see this information when you dial 911. So we can't go in and look up your information okay. unless you've dialed 911. Okay, so it's not like it can be accessed, you know, randomly. Right. It's only Correct. when there is an emergency and when you need help. Right, and you can put as much or as little information. It truly is up to you and how much information you want us to have. Now, we've got, of course, the Sheriff's Office and uh, the County Fire Department here, but do other agencies in the county use this, whether you're here in Bakersfield or maybe California City? A so all of Kern County is deployed. So all okay. of the police agencies, ECC covers all of fire and medical aid, well, and medical aid calls. Uh -huh. So everyone has it in okay. Kern County. They're all live at this time. And, and a good point about that is, is regardless if you live in Kern County, um, if you're living out of state or somewhere, they may have smart 911, so okay. you want to look at that. But it's still, you should sign up anyways. However, if you're traveling through an area and they have smart 911, they'll pick up your information mm -hmm. if you call 911. Same thing with your kids. And so that's where it links up nationwide. And that's so something you don't think about. Right. Of course, there's always the possibility of emergency happening anywhere. Mm -hmm. And if you have that information already out there, it's just another good reason to, you know, to be prepared. Um, I've got to ask you because, of course, this is Disaster Preparedness Month. And in September, we've, we've, we talk about this every year. I feel like a lot of people are already kind of aware of being prepared because we just saw two massive earthquakes in in July and there was a lot of fear that came after those earthquakes and a lot of people started asking the question what am I supposed to do in the event of an emergency and we live in in, in Kern County where there are uh, you know we don't necessarily have the hurricanes that are in the forecast right. we don't have the the torrential downpours that we see like right now in Texas for example uh, but that being said we still have our fair share of disasters and for me personally, I've lived here my whole life. I know about how fast wildfires can spread. Earthquakes, those things cannot be forecast days in advance necessarily. So again, for all of us, it is a good reminder that right. where we live, it is essential for us to to sign up for this. Sign up for this and, and just in general being prepared because it's as simple as losing power for a week that mm -hmm. is detrimental to many people. And so uh, just being prepared, having a plan for any of these scenarios is, is essential, but having Smart 911 really helps us in so many different ways, but not just talking about a person in their residence, but businesses, mm -hmm. uh, large businesses, small businesses, they can sign up for Smart 911, provide their floor plans, which helps responders going around. So if you were to say there, there's a fire in this back office area and we have the floor plan we can see and so as soon as we get on the ground we can go straight to that area now we're talking about you know a lot of us use our our cell phones when we're out and about you know and there's the app of course of smart 911 what about if you dial 911 using a landline it works the same with the landline okay so you can have VoIP or landline and you can register any number and it'll go through if you have a profile can you register multiple numbers yes so you can register your children's phone numbers your husband's um, any adult though you have to get consent from them okay. and I'll send them either a text message or an email saying is it okay for this person to register your account because you don't want to get anyone just to make like a fake account and attach your phone number obviously so there is that security in place as well let's talk about registering mm -hmm. how easy is it for people to register I mean is this something that they can start simply right now yeah it's so easy to register you go up there to say it's sign up and go to smart 911 smart com. Okay. you'll hit sign up and then it bring up all the information you need to know if say you want your elderly parent that has dementia or Alzheimer's to sign up and you know they can't sign up you can help them sign up there's a box on there that says someone's helping you sign up for this registry mm -hmm. that way you know that someone's helping so it's it's really easy it takes like maybe five minutes it just really depends on how much information you want on there you know it wasn't until again I signed up not too long ago and it wasn't until I, I just took a few minutes, I was just more curious to see what this was about, but it wasn't until I started looking through these fields that they, you know, the questions that are asked, where you start to, you know, sit back and, and reflect on, you know, there's a lot of things that could be beneficial for first responders to know about me mm -hmm. uh, in the case of an emergency. And, you know, I think there's nothing wrong with me, nothing's ever gonna happen to me, but whether it be a car accident, right. whether it be, we don't know what could happen. Exactly. As I'm going through this, I'm, I'm realizing, you know what, this, this is essential for 
uh, first responders to know. Would you say it, it could be a matter of life and death? Absolutely. Uh, you know, I mean, as we said, you know, the, the helicopter was a great right. example. I mean, they were in a very rural area in Paiute, and uh, that's, that's a long response. Yeah. And to be able to, to locate so quickly is essential. And if there, uh, fortunately, there wasn't life-threatening injuries, but there were pretty moderate injuries. Um, but those could have turned into life-threatening, and that would have been the difference between making it or not. For you could also be in a situation where, you know, you're normally able to talk and communicate normally, but say you have a stroke mm -hmm. and you're not able to talk, but you're able to dial 911. We can start people to your location or say you're in a house fire and you lose consciousness. They have locations to start looking for you. And there was a success story with that in another state where that happened, where they never would have found him otherwise. So there's an app that you can download too. You can sign up. On, on a computer, but you can also download the Smart 911 app. Talk a little bit about what that app does and what would happen if, let's say, you were out of town mm -hmm. or on vacation somewhere and there was an emergency at home. Would you still get notified through that app? You still get notified through the app, and the difference with the app is that it has alerting on it. Okay. So if you go to another area, you're going to get any type of um, it could be weather alerts or anything that's happening in that area that gets pushed out from either law enforcement or a fire department, you're, um, and they can't, you'll, and they'll, you'll be notified if smart number one's in that area. It's a great, and it's really it's a great easy great resource. And this is starting to become more frequent across the United right. States too, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. Yes. Um, let's talk a little bit about what first responders do and kind of give a kind of unveil the curtain here and, and show a little bit behind the scenes here because when you first call 911, dispatchers are sometimes traditionally given limited information, mm -hmm. right? Very right. much. So this really does help first responders before they dispatch, mm -hmm. or, or I should say the, the dispatchers have limited information unless you have the smart 911 set up, before they dispatch fire, police, sheriff, whoever, mm -hmm. uh, right? Right, yeah, because we have whatever information you've given us. So say you're struggling to think of what type of medical condition mm -hmm. or you know how you're um, brother gets triggered with PTSD, that information is there so we can put that in there for the deputies responding and so they know how to react. What about texting? Uh -huh. Is this yes. something where you, you traditionally think of call 911 and actually speaking with someone on the phone. Can you, can you text 911? Yes, texting is awesome. So we have texted 911 in Kern County, but we can also use this, it, if whether you dial 911 or not, to try to text you and get a hold of you. So another example of a search and rescue on Christmas Eve, we had eight cars get stuck in the Comanche Point area, which is in Stallion Springs. And they could dial 911, but it was, again, a cell tower location that we didn't know where they were at. They didn't know where they were at. We could pinpoint their GPS, communicate with them via a text message until the officers arrived to get them help and safety. So there's a lot of great benefits to the texting. We also had someone from a completely another area come in, dial 911, and we just had like faint noises in the background, which keyed in the dispatcher to try text messaging this person. It was a kidnapping victim from Los Angeles, mm -hmm. and he was able to give us information on the suspects, the type of vehicle he was in, and after about 30 minutes, CHP and the deputies found him and were able to get him to safety. That may not have happened otherwise. Think about the traditional way of using 911 and how it's changing to better yes. serve people who are in that emergency situation. And of course, this is all this is it's it's better for people to sign up mm -hmm. uh, because again we, we don't know when right. it's going to when an emergency is going to happen uh, Brandon, i gotta ask you too about talking to you know you sign up and maybe you're you're a parent maybe you, you live alone but what about if you have kids how do you where do you start the conversation with kids and and talking about the the resources that are available to them with this with this service uh, well, I think for the most part, the security for parents. I mean, when your when your parents aren't when the parents aren't with the kids, you, you're always worrying about your kids. And if uh, one of your kids came across an emergency as they were walking home from school, mm -hmm. say, and they called 911, that allows us to be able to get in contact with the parent to advise them of what's going on with their child. Um, so it, it does create a, a better link for us to be able to reach out to the parents because many times we will receive calls. Uh, maybe from a child with no parent being able to get in contact and then law enforcement will then have to be there to 
take custody of the child initially to until they can get a hold of the parents. And so this would help alleviate some of that. And also, I mean, in, in reality, it benefits us a lot too because it frees up our resources in mm -hmm. many different ways because we can get there quicker we can handle that emergency and move on to the next one or vice versa. If we're able to just go direct to the parents and not have to pull law enforcement in for a scenario like this where they're not necessarily needed, but only for custody of the child, we can get the parents there. You know, so it does help on both sides. You know what I like about this too is it, when I was finished, when I was signing up and I finished the, the, the form, it gives you a peace of mind because you know that there was an emergency. You, you've you've saved a couple minutes maybe. I mean, I mean depending Absolutely. on the, the situation. And, and that's just always good to know. It's like you, you take a couple minutes, if that, and that's all it really takes, mm -hmm. to, fill out that info, or to fill out the information. And really that amount of time that you spend on that information is, it just almost like you get that time back in a, right. in a, in a life-threatening situation sometimes. Well, and you brought up dispatchers, and, and I think uh, where this helps for them is uh, you know, many times they, they're taking limited or no information. Mm -hmm. And so this really brings, uh, not only, as I said, it works on both sides because this helps that dispatcher, one, I mean, it, it adds a lot of stress to somebody when you have unknowns. How often is it when you go to a situation and you, it's almost like you're walking into it just blind? Often, very often. And how, how does that impact the, I mean, I know you're trained obviously to, to deal with those situations, but what is the difference for, for you when you get to the scene when there's, it's chaotic and I mean, naturally you're going to kind of be on high, heightened alert. How important is it for you to just have that information just ahead of time, even if it's basic stuff where you're not going into a situation blindly? Yeah. Um, I mean, you know, you, you react based on what the scenario is, but to attack anything or deal with the scenario ahead of you, you've got to have some information. And so um, just getting the information beforehand, mm -hmm. it, it just, I can't even say how, how much it helps you when you get there to deal with the scenario that you already have this. So you're already a step ahead once you walk onto the scene. Okay, so again, smart911.com. You can also download the app, Android and Apple, right? Yes. Okay, so go to the App Store, you know, when, when we're finished here and, and go to your, again, smart911.com to sign up. Also, because this is Disaster Preparedness Month and we're really trying to stress the importance of getting prepared for the unknown, whether that be a natural disaster, a medical emergency, we have created a page on our website, kget.com slash disaster, where you can actually go back and look at all of the information that we've gathered from first responders and uh, other crews and other officials on how to prepare yourself for the worst case scenario, really, because we cannot plan for an emergency. We cannot plan for a disaster. And when seconds matter, this is the time, of course, these resources that are available are so important for you to use when seconds matter. All right, we're gonna take just a quick break here and then we're gonna talk a little bit about, uh, again, more of the essential uh, aspects of this service that you can sign up for. We'll see you in about, uh, about a minute. You're talking about something called Smart 911 that could change the way it works. The new high-tech tool that could help you in an emergency. The personal safety game changer is called Smart 911. I like to describe Smart 911 as 911 on steroids. And then afterwards, found out that Smart 911 cut 11 minutes off of the response time and saved me, saved my life. That quickness, that speed, makes a real difference when responding to an emergency. An estimated 240 million calls are made to 911 in the U.S. each year. You may never have to call 911, but if you do, you'll want to make sure that you downloaded the Smart 911 app. Smart 911 securely shares vital information about your household with emergency responders. If you ever call 911, call takers will immediately see your address, medical conditions, details about your home and pets, and anything else that allows them to send help faster. Plus, Smart 911 keeps you up to date on any nearby emergencies that may impact you or your community. Download the Smart 911 app to instantly share life-saving information. It can make all the difference when it comes to keeping you and your family safe. All right, welcome back. Uh, joining me now is Robin Taylor, the Deputy Director of Kern Behavioral Health and Recovery Services, here to talk more about the Smart 911 service and how essential it is for people 
who may have a, a disability. Uh, Robin, thanks for, for coming on. Uh, let's talk about how this all started, because I think it's kind of interesting to know the, the origins of this uh, service in order to fully understand and appreciate uh, its impact. Absolutely. Actually, this came out of our uh, current crisis intervention uh, team, which is in partnership with law enforcement, um, other community members, and behavioral health. And really, it developed with the need for a special needs registry um, for individuals to provide information that they felt was vital. It started with our behavioral health clients and family members who have loved ones that may at times have a mental health crisis and may be fearful to call law enforcement because they're not sure how they're going to respond because law enforcement won't have that vital information before they arrived on the scene. Um, so Kern Behavioral Health was able to get funding for an innovation project um, and that's where we got Smart 911. Um, we implemented it across all of Kern County and are really started reaching out to uh, the behavioral health population, uh -huh. family members, and individuals that are diagnosed with uh, a mental health disorder and encourage them to put that information in their Smart 911 profile so that they won't have to be afraid to call law enforcement when they're in a mental health crisis, that they know the officers will have the information they need. Um, so that they can respond to what's going on with them. There are tens of thousands of 911 calls a year Absolutely. across the county. And I mean, that's a lot of calls. And you, you, ex you think about how many of those calls uh, first responders are going in and not knowing what they're responding to. And every situation can be different. Um, what does, what, now that this program is out, the service has been out for a while now. Yes. Have we, have you seen kind of a, a success here with how it's been used in Kern County? Absolutely, I think it started as a, as a smaller contained idea uh -huh. and it has exploded. It is beneficial for everyone in Kern County. Um, and we've looked at individuals that um, have not only mental health diagnoses, but medical disorders mm -hmm. or disabilities that previously, you know, someone may, may not know, a first responder won't know when they respond on the scene. Um, we're working with our deaf and hearing impaired community um, so that they can put that vital information in so responders will know what they're coming into. And actually, when we released this out, um, members of the deaf community gave us some really good feedback that there was a little gap in our smart 911 system that they had difficulties in creating their registries um, because with TTI and video relay it was kind of kicking them out of the system. Mm. So we were able to go back to uh, Rave Mobile um, and give them that feedback and they're already creating solutions to these issues. Um, and in fact they created a phone number and I'll tell you it's 888-605-7164 and then you go on option three, and this is for individuals who are deaf or hearing impaired okay. and are getting kicked out of the system, they can call that number to assist them ensuring that they get their registry completed. What, you know, for, for people who, of course, may have a disability, what about for family members, friends, caretakers, uh, who know someone or, or, or uh, take care of someone with a disability, what do they need to know in, you know, before someone signs up, or can they help someone that they know sign up for this? Absolutely. Um, as Tammy said before, too, adults have to give permission right. for their um, for their registry. However, there is a spot in the registry that you can say someone is assisting me with that. Um, a lot of times when we have our um, aging and adult population with dementia and Alzheimer's, they may need assistance in creating their own profile. Um, in addition, some someone who has any type of cognitive issue or um, challenges in, in getting through or navigating the system, um, they can get assistance through that. What are some of the highlights of this system? And when you think about, okay, you, you put your medical condition down, you put mm -hmm. some of the basic information down there. Uh, what are some of the things that you think really stand out about some of the information that is available for first responders to see immediately when that call is placed? Absolutely. I mean, it's it's dramatic, um, especially for individuals when you look at um, individuals that are diagnosed with a mental health diagnosis. Mm -hmm. um, that didn't exist before we, Kern County came along in SMART 911. None of those uh, 
sections existed. And so we were able to partner with Rave Mobile and create that. And once it was released for Kern, it was released nationwide. Um, and so you can write that sometimes I hear things and see things that other people don't. Um, mm. You know, you can put with, um, you know, I'm afraid of loud noises. Um, my child, when he's scared, will hide under the closet in this area. Um, it just there's information that they can put in. And see, that's information that you don't necessarily think about, you know, because there's so many different things that can happen in an emergency, but yes. you put that out now when you're in a calm, collected environment, when you kind of know in the back of your mind what typically happens during an emergency, uh, but when things start to really be chaotic and when your brain's trying to process everything, this is vital information that's, that's documented beforehand which again can really make the difference. Absolutely, because whether when you're in a crisis, whether it's a disaster, a mental health crisis, yeah. a physical health care crisis, you know your loved one and you may not be able to communicate all the vital information. Um, it's very chaotic, yeah. and so having that ahead of time really helps first responders. What is one thing you want people to know about this service uh, to get them to sign up? I mean, I just think it is valuable for everyone. Um, and it's it, great too, because we're talking about how it really started here yes. in Kern County. And now that information will go with you anywhere, wherever you go. Anywhere that has Smart 911 um, across the nation, if you're there and you call 911, your profile will come up and they'll be able to assist you. I mean, you can register and have pictures. You can register your animals. You know, there are some of us who our animals are our children. I did you, it. I did it. <laughs> you can yeah. put everything. I had a diabetic dog that had to have insulin. You know, I mean, there's things you can put in there that really helps uh, your entire family. And you know, we we're not we're not trained on how to respond to to disasters and stuff. You think yes. about, and I, I want to go back to the earthquake that we had back in in July because. Even people here, and of course, it, it rocked the Ridgecrest area, Absolutely. and they were devastated by it. But I know that a lot of people here in Bakersfield who felt it, and other areas of California, really started to go, wait a minute, I, I don't, you know, and, and go into that panic mode. And you know, you hear from officials who say, you know, it's been quiet lately, earthquake-wise, and this is typical, and now it's kind of a reminder of we don't know when the next earthquake's gonna happen. We don't know when the next fire is going to happen. We don't know when the next medical emergency is going to happen. And so when we're, when we know that in the back of our minds, oh, it could happen, we're not necessarily trained on how to get through those things uh, when it when it does happen. And so that's why it seems like this is so important for people. And again, in a calm, collected environment, to be able to put that information out in a form and submit it before that happens. Absolutely, and actually we learned a lot from the Ridgecrest earthquake on how we can utilize the information in Smart 911 in a disaster. So not only when you register and create your profile does it prompt you, do you want to be notified of a disaster, and it'll prompt you to put that information. Do you have a generator? Do you have transportation? Do you have mobility issues? Are you on um, medical equipment that requires electricity? Um, all of these vital information is in your Smart 911 profile and it prompts you to put that in. So when we have a disaster like um, the earthquake in Ridgecrest or a massive power outage or a fire, um, we can pull reports and provide that information through the EOC and the communication center so that they know the fire is in this area, this is the evacuation area. We can run that report, provide it to the EOC and their communication, then can provide first responders. Here is the location of everybody in this evacuation area that is has mobility issues and will not be able to evacuate on their own. All of this is amazing mm -hmm. that, that we can do that. Yeah, you're talking about how important communication is. You hear that from yes. everyone. You hear that yeah. from work, school, wherever, how communication is key. And it's so difficult sometimes to keep that communication clear during an emergency. This is what helps that communication be at its best, really, for any type of situation. Absolutely. I mean, we all kind of have our disaster preparedness right. plan in our home, but it's amazing to say you can put that disaster preparedness plan in, on Smart 911, and they now the first responders have your plan too. And they need to know how to respond and best Absolutely. assist you because they're prepared, they're well trained, they know how to deal with pretty much everything, but when they get, you know, kind of heads up on things, yes. it makes all the difference in the world. So again, smart911.com, that is the service that you want to sign up for. Again, 
even if you're a busy person, it just takes a few minutes to, to sign up. And really, it, it can be the difference between life and death. You just heard Brandon talk about that earlier, about how essential it is for, uh, for you and for first responders to know what's going on in case of an emergency. Talk about the privacy. Absolutely. It is safe. You can put your information out there and it is secure. Unle you know, and, 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 and that information is brought to first responders when you call 911. So that's what, again, kind of reiterating that it's not like people can go through that information. Only when the emergency happens is when that information is going to be available only for first responders. So again, we have all this information on our website, kget.com slash disaster. We're rounding out disaster preparedness month. You know, it's hard to believe September just goes like that. So again, highly recommend you go through there and make sure that you take a few minutes to talk with your family, talk with your friends on how to best be prepared for whatever could come your way. Uh, again, thanks so much for joining us on this special web chat. And again, kgt.com slash disaster for more information.